How much money do you make? <laughs> a year? <laughs> yeah. A few million bucks. A few million bucks? That was just okay. right away. <laughs> yeah, that's how I open every <laughs> okay. podcast. Okay. Yeah, last year I made like two million bucks. Well, you're a G and you have crazy cool cars <laughs> and you just you. bought a dope house. So you, the yes. money's real. Um, <laughs> what do you do? I started with drop shipping and then in 2017, I started creating content around that business. And that's when I started to, I guess, really find my calling, which was YouTube as well as business. Wait, so you were making drop shipping videos in 2017? Yeah, in high school. Dude, that's like the They're peak. terrible though. Wasn't like, that like the peak of drop shipping? Like, uh, yeah, in a sense, like it was where it was super easy. We're seeing that now, like this year with TikTok shop too. But like I am seeing how easy, or I saw how easy it was back then where you can just, you know, hit up an influencer on Instagram and run up tons of money. So for sure. Okay. So this is what I love the most about you and your story is that was like a huge mania of drop shipping 2017, 2018, mm -hmm. maybe 2019 as well. But then a lot of people, once it got harder, it became a little less unpopular or yep. a little less popular. Almost everyone switched out and switched to the next trend on YouTube mm -hmm. where you like stayed in the drop shipping lane and just kept going mm -hmm. and learning and building through the skill. And now you're like one of the few people that can like legitimately drop ship anything and you just know what the fuck you're doing. And even if you fail with one product, you'll find yeah. the next one and make a lot of money on that. So explain why, just explain that process for you. So it's nothing fancy. I think I'm naturally not the smartest person ever. And so like there's tons of other businesses. Obviously you guys were into crypto and stuff. I just personally like was not that educated with everything else. And it's like, you don't know what you don't know. Mm. So I just always knew drop shipping. I knew, okay, I could find products online. I have suppliers I've already built up connections with. So it was just something that had always interested me and always made me money. So I never even thought to look elsewhere because I knew if I already had this business that I had base knowledge for, if I could just keep, you know, growing 10% a year or 20% a year with mm. knowledge, I will be light years ahead of if I try to start a different business every other year and keep ping ponging around from other stuff. Cause that's what I did in the beginning and it just got me nowhere. And then I kind of talked to myself. I was like, Hey, focus on one thing and it worked. And so that's why, like, it's not anything fancy. It's just, I saw drop shipping as a thing and I didn't really change my mind. I kind of just focused on it. What makes a successful drop shipper in 2023? Okay. So I think it's important to focus on the fact that you stuck through drop shipping since like the start yep. of the popularity, but you referenced that it's now becoming easy again mm -hmm. with TikTok. Yes. So just, Walk me through your drop shipping process. Okay. So drop shipping in 2023 is insane right now. Like it's uh, specifically with TikTok. I'll just tell you, like talk to you. TikTok is ridiculous right now. So the organic content reach right now with TikTok shop is ridiculous. And I saw, so essentially what TikTok shop is, it's like Amazon. So they are trying to compete with Amazon. They're trying to have facilities that house their own inventory where brands like if you had a brand you could reach out to them house inventory with them they will fulfill your orders and you can sell your product directly on their platform so that's what they're doing mm. now and they are trying to use the overall reach they have on their platform to push people to just stay on their platform because they saw all these advertisers in the last few years run ads to external websites and it converted like crazy. Like that's how we've done again, 5 million in the last 12 months is with TikTok ads pushing to our own Shopify store. But now what is happening is TikTok realized that and they're like, okay, let's keep it all in house. And that's why TikTok shop is a thing now. So now essentially you can create your own store on TikTok and sell directly to those consumers on the app already in the oh, app. Oh shit. Yeah. So that's, that's how I it works. And the best thing is, is TikTok manages their content. So the organic like feed that you go through, that will be controlled by TikTok. And when they release new features, like with TikTok shop, every other video is a TikTok shop promoting a product. And so that's how powerful it is. So essentially what we are doing is we are now finding products that we already sold with TikTok ads, literally just taking them, putting them on TikTok shop, sending them out to creators with Amazon Prime. We're just priming them to the creators. They get it next day and then they film content and they are incentivized to make the content because we give them a commission. Okay. I have some of this one over my head. So okay, what, well, when you said Amazon Prime. Yeah, like, okay. Okay. Yeah. Let me explain. Let me backtrack. So essentially TikTok has a creator program where you can say, Hey, I have this product, you know, creators can reach out to me. I can reach out to creators and I can see if I can make a deal. So that way they uh, basically can get the product from us and make content for the product to push sales because 
excuse me, TikTok has an affiliate program where, for example, you, let's say you have a big TikTok following over 5K uh, minimum, you can actually get my product and then you can film content with it. And if it's on the get, TikTok shop. Yes, and you will get 20%. That's You can set your affiliate commission. So we you, set 20. you launch a product on TikTok shop, mm -hmm. Sebastian. Yes. And I have 50,000 followers on TikTok. I can then make- I can reach out to you, say, Brett, I want you to make content. You know, we love your page, whatever you want to say to convince them. And then say, we'll give you 20% of every sale you bring in. So I can make an, basically an ad, mm -hmm. but it's just a normal post on my account. Yes. And it promotes your product with a link to yeah, your TikTok with shop a, product. a shop. It's okay. not even like a URL. It's just directly on the app. So that's the cool part. But if you think about it deeper, it becomes a lot more crazy in your head. So you realize that every single creator who's making content for the TikTok shop subconsciously each viewer sees it and in their head they're like okay this isn't just an ad because in order to actually get that product and make a tiktok shop video this video that i'm watching that this person's talking about i don't know this mic stand they had to have already gotten the product from this brand that is now being promoted so it's another layer of trust where you don't just see an ad and it in your head you don't automatically turn it as a scam or like a, a you oh know, so you have freak to have sale yeah you have to actually get the product from the shop you're promoting, that way you can now promote it. So if you get what I mean, like, like they all the make creators, you buy one. Yeah, well, they make you buy them or you can send them free samples and then they accept the sample. But overall, all of these creators have gotten a product from the shop. So it's like this new layer of trust again to mm. actually build into the overall platform to make it just next level. So it's literally like if Amazon had creator profiles where you can make content first. Yeah, exactly. But there's a shop with it. That's pretty cool. It's insane. That's bro. actually crazy. We tried it out with a, a shop like I think we started a week ago. We sent uh, maybe it's actually two or three products out. It costs us. So, so hold on. So it's yeah, like yeah. Amazon FBA. Like if you have a product, you have to send a That's pallet. That's the goal for TikTok. Okay. It's not yet. A, we're in communication with them to see their goal and they want to do that. However, for now, it's just a platform. It's like eBay was and Amazon was back then when they didn't have the fulfillment. Um, no, it's just like a, a platform, a marketplace where you can sell products. So you can still drop ship. You yes, can still get a exactly supplier in Alibaba. Yep. Okay. So, so how do you get a product on TikTok shop? You can just go on TikTok shop, just Google it, seller account and then you create a seller account. So you start listing your products and you can have them all loaded up. So like for one, for instance, we are selling a women's product. I won't say it because we're still selling it. And we plan to probably do a few million this Q4 with it. And so we sent it out to a handful of people, maybe five. And of those five, uh, it cost us, I would say $10 to $20 per product to get to the actual uh, people to make content. So let's say it cost us a hundred bucks. So of that hundred bucks, we actually have generated 3000 bucks in uh, sales that has been generated. I think profits around 1500 bucks and there's no ad spend. So it's literally a hundred bucks and we've profited 1500 from just sending them out and people are making content promoting it. So it's just like a baked in affiliate program in a way. Yeah. Does TikTok take a percentage? They take 5%. Okay, so Amazon takes 15%, mm -hmm. but this system, you can put a product on TikTok shop, the creator that promotes the product gets 20%, and then TikTok takes five. Yeah, uh, the creator can get whatever. You can yeah. put five, 10, but I like to do 20. Oh, yeah. so it's just an affiliate system yep. that you choose. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah. And they can natively make content in the app and yeah. sell the product within the app. And once they do a good video, this is the killer parts. You can number one, talk to them and say, hey, look at how good you did. You generated us a thousand dollars. Imagine if you did this once a week, like if you consistently post content, you can make so much money. So that's number one. Also, if you want to launch other products and you already have creators that are doing well, you pull them off the platform. You pretend, well, I don't know if this is against TOS, <laughs> but you keep talking to them and you say, hey, we have new products to launch and all this stuff. They can now create new products and new videos for your products and make you tons of money for endless amounts of products. So it's it's a win-win. So you're like building that relationship with that creator. Yeah, exactly. And then you can talk to them and mm -hmm. promote anything in the yep. future. This is, so this is like UGC creators yep. optimized. This is like influencer marketing optimized. Yeah. All in one platform. Exactly. It's like everything we wanted for Instagram that never happened. Yeah. Like there was never a hub where you can directly just look up, hey, I want people over 5,000 followers who get this many views. Wow. TikTok has that already. And you can't, you weren't able to do that with Instagram. You can do it so in depth. You can pick the category of content they make, what gender they are and everything like that and get a, t a huge list of creators that are willing to promote your product. Okay, there's so much to unpack. How long has this been around? A while. A while. What's up? Um, it's been around for not actually a while, 60 days or so. I think they launched so it like TikTok two months ago. So TikTok shot came out two months ago? Yes, that's why I'm like Holy so hyped shit. about it because okay. I think it's something where people are going to 
gap a lot of newbies if they don't start soon because yeah. TikTok shop is going to get bigger, which means that reps and everyone else aren't going to be as accessible. Uh, you know, the creators are going to get bombarded with tons of uh, re requests and stuff to actually promote content. And so, you know, I think now is an amazing time to start. There's always an arbitrage with being mm -hmm. the first one. Like 100%. If, if you're the first on a certain platform, especially an ad platform, they're going to give you better CPMs because mm. they want you to feel like it's doing good. Oh, yeah. And so the fact that there's only been around for two months, like I'm sure there's like barely any products on there. Yeah, and it's only no in the U.S. It's not even in the other countries oh yet. So, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Every time I do a podcast with people, I always like immediately want to ping pong around <laughs> now to other business models. That's actually fucking crazy. Yeah. Because that makes so much sense. It's like the mm -hmm. first platform that has video and the marketplace and the affiliate incentive. So it's like a perfect triangle. Yeah. So now, okay. now essentially what we're doing is we have VAs just reaching out to tons of creators daily saying, hey, you know, once essentially our business model, I can kind of play it out. I think that'd be valuable. Yeah. We pick five products to 10 products to test with TikTok shop where we basically say, hey, we're going to send out like five products per product. So essentially we'll send out five units per product of each individual product that we're going to test and we'll send them to all different creators. They all make content, whatever product does the best, that's the one we'll focus on. And then once we do, then we have VAs literally copy and paste messages to tons of new influencers saying, hey, we have this product, can you promote it? And they can reach out to, you know, thousands a day. And then we, if we can find like 50 to 100 creators a day that will promote our product, you know, at a 10% win rate, we're making thousands oh a day God. and there's no ad cost. So that's why I am hopping on it and just absolutely capitalizing the hell on it because I know how easy it is right now. This is like, did you see the podcast with Oliver? Uh, not really, the no. The Tabs sex uh -uh. shop, that one. This is literally his system, but now baked into TikTok. Yeah, exactly. That's crazy. Mm. And are you reaching out to them directly on the TikTok platform? It's on TikTok Seller. They have a communication platform on there. TikTok Seller? Yeah, on the, or sorry, on the TikTok Shop Seller account, you have a, like, it's like a messaging app that's linked up with it. I don't know what it's called, but yeah. But so, so it's in the it's TikTok directly, platform. Yeah, integrated. How are you integrated. finding people to reach out to? What's your outreach strategy? Uh, essentially, like, what are we actually saying or the filter or what? The filter. Okay, so that's just, uh, it depends on what product you're actually going to be using. If you're selling a product for men, obviously filter to men's influencers. We like to do over 10,000 followers. And then you can actually, this is the crazy part, you can see the average views of the account. So mm. it can say this girl has 20,000 uh, followers, but on average she gets 200,000 views. That's a killer ratio, yeah, right? Wow. Like 10x or following. Really good engagement. And so that's what we do. We look for those valuable things that are over, uh, you know, 5x uh, con or view to follower ratio where they're getting way more views per follow that they have. And so we basically just do that and then tell our VAs to do that on a big scale. Interesting. Okay. And then what I'm assuming just the outreach message itself is just like, Hey, hey, we love your page. You know, we have these few products when we're testing, we say we have these few products. Would you be interested in promoting them for 20% or for 15% hmm. or whatever? And then once we have a winning product, we're like, Hey, we are selling this product and it's doing really well. Other creators are making this much a week or whatever. Would you be interested in selling it? Okay. That makes sense. Very simple process. Yeah. Now, how are you choosing what products to sell? Again, we're essentially looking at what products sold well in the past. So all we're doing is pulling our past winners. It's kind of easy for us. But if a newbie was trying to do this, I would just type in the term shop. I can actually, you want me to show you real quick? Sure. <laughs> it's actually really cool. Um, you can pull up TikTok and type in the term shop. And then if you go to the shop tab, you can look at all of these different, if it'll load... Um, all of these different products, this one had sold 8,000 units, 5,000 units, 395,000 units. So you can see units. the top sellers. So yeah, you look at the top selling products, maybe don't sell that exact one, but you start to learn from what's selling well and then what people can easily make content for. Because not every product is mm. easy to make content for. If it's something super complex, not every influencer is going to be able to talk about it. So yeah, it's kind of combining those things, making so, sure margins are good and then... Okay, so you find a product on TikTok shop that's like working well, but then you have to go to alibaba right or for fulfillment all we don't buy in bulk yet we are going to but for now all we do is just we work with zendrop they can fulfill all of our orders and there is one thing you need to have u.s tracking so you may need u.s suppliers if mm. you want to have fast shipping as well as tiktok requires you to input the tracking at most seven days so if you get an order today you have to fulfill it within seven days or they will cancel all of the orders oh so yeah. you can't like have a two three week shipping time. yeah well you can uh, it's only tracking you need to input the tracking within a week which is not that bad like, okay yeah, yeah. as long as you're on top of your stuff but i think it's good tiktok is like weeding out the scammy scumbags who do drop shipping yeah. traditionally and making it a very clean platform with 
uh, with consequences if you fail to comply with everything. You know, you have a rating on your store where if people are unhappy, they will start to kind of throttle back your performance and all of that stuff. So, so they're kind of making it more trustworthy, like Amazon. Again, That's they're trying to do Amazon. it. They're trying to be Amazon. It's smart. It makes <laughs> yeah, a lot of sense. Which is smart because they have all the reach. So. Okay, so but you're using Zendrop to like search and find products to fulfill the orders. So how they're do you basically find the supplier. That's how I'm, I'm finding them by just again, like I showed you on TikTok shop. I'll look. Sorry, through. sorry, sorry. How do you source a product? So say you find the product you want yes. to use. Mm -hmm. And then you have to you like need talk to get the supplier for it, right? That's yeah, a, yeah. pricing. Okay. That's through Zendrop. We have their pro plan. It's like 50 bucks and we have a Slack channel with 15 employees from Zendrop. So we'll just send the link from AliExpress. We'll say, Hey, we want this product source. Here's our target cost. And then they will uh, get a supplier or so get it's a AliExpress. Sourcing. No, that's just a reference point to okay. say, this is the exact product we want. Gotcha. Get us actual pricing with shipping. Okay. So you see it on TikTok shop. Mm -hmm. Then you go to Zendrop. You look it up on AliExpress. See, that's and we the get point. a link okay. and then we're like, yep, this is the one. And then we send it to our Slack channel uh, for Zendrop and say, we need this product sourced. Okay, perfect. Crystal yeah. clear now. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Okay, so that's the product. Just one more point on this. What makes like a good product? Like how are you identifying what to sell? Because yeah. you have years in the game. Mm -hmm. And I know this is almost like the most important <laughs> aspect of dropshipping. Sure. So... A winning product is, I like to think of it as the audience you're selling to. So first thing, you have to pick of what sort of audience are you trying to sell to? How niche are you wanting to go? Personally, I don't like selling super hyper-focused niches. I like selling to anyone. If I could sell someone, if I can sell a product that can sell to women and female and any age, that's perfect because, you know, it, it's scalable. You can scale it to 20 to 50K a day. So that's first thing. I like to overall think of like what products or what overall categories can I sell in? So for example, women's beauty. Most women wear makeup. Most women have hair. And so for example, hair curlers, we've done millions of dollars with those products. Like there's one you guys can all look up. It's this little wire wireless hair curler. You can put it in your purse and you can curl your hair in the car. That one did so well because again, every girl wants to curl their hair. And if they can take it on the go, because they're always late to get ready, they can do their hair <laughs> in the car and they're good to go. And so those sorts of products that number one, they solve a problem. And then number two can be sold to the masses. That's all we pretty much look for. Obviously there are some fine points, like we need good margins. It needs to have a little bit of a wow factor. Um, other than that though, like that's pretty much it. And you can like easily visually portray yeah. the value of the product. That's another thing is like the value has to be instant. We've tried to sell products that maybe the value like supplements or certain serums that take months to get results. Those are typically harder to sell just because there's no, uh, you know, instant before and after. So, so you seem to be this, you this is the niche you mentioned mm -hmm. be beauty for women. Mm -hmm. Is there any reason why you've gravitated towards that? So number one, women are easy to sell to. They're happier to spend money than guys. Guys, I had a tweet go viral <laughs> where I posted my mattress setup and it was just a bed on the floor. Yeah. Guys don't need a lot of stuff, but girls, they want to paint their face. They want to have their nails done. They want to do everything. And so it's just easier because girls are naturally bigger consumers. So that's why, but I'm not saying guy products don't work. We're actually selling one that we're starting, I believe next week. That's a guy product. It's actually unisex, but mainly guys. And so we'll sell to both for sure. But guys, they need good deals or they need like a real reason to buy the product. Maybe it solves a good problem. But yeah, typically we sell to girls. Like if they, guys are going to view it as like an investment where they expect Exactly. An They're more logical. Yeah. yeah. Girls are like, Ooh, pretty. <laughs> yeah. I want it now. <laughs> you know, <Impulsive. laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's your ethos for a product. Mm -hmm. Let's just stick with, let's just use a hair curler okay. in context for this example, since you kind of know about it. Yeah. So what made, what was the video that you're having these creators make? Yeah. So essentially it's just demoing the product. It's nothing fancy. However, the, this was years ago too. And the atmosphere has changed. It used to be like one creator can just say, Hey, Oh my God, like, look at this product. It's super cool. Now with TikTok ads, cause we do both. We do TikTok shop and ads now for ads. As far as TikTok goes, we actually go ahead and we mash up like 20 different clips, maybe 10 to 20 mm. clips of people using the product. Cause again, it's like Social proof. in the, yeah, it's in the back of their head. You're baking in social proof into their minds and then they usually convert better that way we do that with beauty products with clothing with all of that because you know what's better than one if you see 20 people using right. the product so it's almost just like a montage of people exactly. using just in the car like yep. beer down is there any words on the screen 
Uh, yeah, usually. So this is one thing specifically with TikTok ads. TikTok shop is a lot more simple, but with ads, we always keep the offer in the first few seconds. So for example, if we're going to sell, I don't know, a crew neck, if we're going to do a buy one, get one free, that offer will be in the first few seconds of the ad. The mm. reason is, is we have an insane sale and we want people to know about it. That way we can get the click through rate up, which is essentially if you get a thousand impressions, a hundred people that actually click on that ad, that's a 10% click through rate. So we want a high ass click through rate. In order to do so, you need to show what the actual value proposition is, which is in this case, buy one, get one free or something similar. Okay. So is that just literally like buy one, get one free words on the screen? Yeah. Is yeah, there a it's, certain it's so style simple. of no, font? No, uh, like, just the TikTok font. We can okay. do it on InShot. Uh, that's the app we use. But no, that's it. Like uh, do that. And then you can narrate with text. Like say, this is the best. Da, 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 da. It's not <laughs> difficult. It's just What like is it, that copy? What is that script? Like, uh, like what do you mean? Like what is This is, is the exactly? best hair curler if you're yeah, on the go. Yeah, or like, oh like, my God, I love this dress. Like I wear it everywhere. Perfect <laughs> summer dress, you know, whatever. Get yours now at the end. It's nothing fancy, but I think it's a combination of all of the clips, the audio. We usually have a very good, genuine voiceover. And then the text kind of just subconsciously hammers home what we're trying to say. Is sell. there music? Um, typically there's not, if anything, it's played really, excuse me, really quietly. That Chick-fil-A is coming back up, <laughs> uh, playing really quietly, or we just have a really quality voiceover, which now you can do with AI. Um, I think 11 labs is a killer mm -hmm. one that we use and we plug in those actually really often now. So 11 labs voiceovers yeah. and then just cut up montages of all these people using it first two or three seconds, your offer. So mm -hmm. buy one, get one, or maybe a discount or yeah. whatever. Is this, is there like still like headline captions? Anything Just a like caption, that. that's it. A uh, caption, they don't really matter. Get yours now, you know, buy this now, buy one, get one free. It's so pretty just, simple. Just the offer, essentially. Yeah. So it's way simpler than mm -hmm. Facebook ads where yep. you're having to lay out this whole sales copy. So, so yeah, dude, honestly, TikTok, the main thing is content. And I think that's how it's going to go for the next few years with Facebook and TikTok, even with the TikTok shop and everything. Ads and targeting and all the specifics are going to go out the window because I think AI Even is targeting? Gonna, yeah. Oh, for sure. We don't run any targeting with TikTok. We just turn on campaigns and the, uh, the actual video ads do all the targeting for us. And so I think it's going to keep going into that area where we actually aren't doing any targeting at all because uh, we're already not with TikTok. And it's going to be <laughs> mainly content driven where you just need to dial in your creatives and call out your audience in each video. It sounds way easier than what I had to used to do. Yeah, dude, it's it's literally just making good videos. It's not easy though. Like the videos are the mm -hmm. hard part for sure. But with the TikTok shop, it's becoming a lot easier because you don't even have to pay for videos. Like we used to have to Amazon Prime the product to uh, to creators and then also pay them a hundred bucks on top of the videos. Now we're literally saying, hey, you know, get the product, we'll send it to you for free. Just make content and we'll give you commission. And it's a win-win because everyone wins and we get all that content now from the TikTok shop that we can now link up with TikTok ads and run paid ads to the TikTok shop, which obviously TikTok is now preferring their shop over uh, yeah. external URLs, which we have been seeing a decrease in paid ad conversions compared to like weeks ago before the TikTok shop was a thing. So that makes sense intentionally though. Yeah, for if sure. You, I mean, Twitter does that too. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. They're trying to dominate. Okay. So, but let's focus on TikTok ads. I just want to fully understand this. Yeah. So it's obviously now it's all about the creative, but mm -hmm. you said there's no targeting. There's no anything yeah. other than you just make the video and then make run an ad so there is targeting but it's dog shit like it just, so just doesn't don't work. do it yeah yeah don't do it so what we do is we turn on a campaign we do you know 50 bucks a day cbo and then we'll plug in ad groups what is in. cbo okay so cbo is a campaign budget optimization i think of them as folders so the campaign is the objective level of what you want to do. So for this campaign, we turn it on and we say, hey, we want to get conversions. We want website conversions. And so that's essentially the main objective. And then you say, let this whole campaign run $50. And then inside here, you have ad groups. And each ad group has detailed targeting, which is the age, the gender, the language, all of the specifics and what time like you're going to run the ads. Yeah. And so you have five ad groups in this one campaign. So you could either set each ad group at a $20 a day budget or say, hey, this whole campaign, give it 50 bucks. If you want to spend 20 on one ad group and $5 on the other, you can be my guest. And then that's basically how we do it. And then you load up creative. So that's essentially how. So it are the ad groups, is each one of those ads in the ad group a different creative? No, we will essentially plug in like three to, I would say actually three to 10, maybe even sometimes 20 creatives in each ad group 
then there's after the ad group, there's like ad groups, another folder that houses the creatives. And in those we'll plug in again, probably like five to the 20 creatives. Sets. Yeah. The, you know, the ad group and then the ad itself. It's the ad, okay. ad set is like ad group for okay, uh, okay. Facebook. Yeah. Okay, so, gotcha, gotcha. so that's essentially how it breaks down. And then, yeah, we'll load up like five to 20 creatives. And then from there, we essentially see what creatives work. So you have ad groups. So you have the campaign, which is the folder. Yeah. So it's like Everything's inside this you campaign. You want sales, you want clicks, what do you yeah, want? So you're going yeah. for sales, and that's what this folder is all about, getting mm -hmm. sales. And then you have 10, 20 different ad groups. Five. Okay, so you have five different ad groups, yeah. but you're not doing any targeting. The mm -hmm. point of the ad group is to tell TikTok which demographic to go after. Yeah. But you're just letting TikTok do its thing. For the you're most creating part. Five Sometimes we'll do like age, but yeah. Okay, but you're doing, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. But you're doing five different ad groups because each one of those ad groups is going to, TikTok's algorithm is going to naturally target a different demographic. Mm -hmm. And so you're letting TikTok's algorithm show you, letting it figure it out, the AI figure it out. Mm -hmm. And then within each one of those ad groups, you have 10 different creatives, yep. 10 video, photo, different offers. And so TikTok by itself in one campaign mm -hmm. is going to figure out out of five different demographics, this one's the best. And within each demographic, this is the best offer combined with creative. Mm -hmm. Is that the process? Yeah, and then it delegates spend to whatever ad groups are working the best. Automatically. And then, and then uh, literally all we do with TikTok ads is like, if something's working that same day, we'll go on the campaign, we'll edit the settings and bump up the budget. So if it's at 50 bucks, and let's just say, I don't know, it's noon and the ads are crushing it, what we'll do, we'll just edit that campaign, bump it up from 50 to 100. If it still is working after another 30 minutes to an hour, we're still getting the same amount of CPA, like same cost, cost per acquisition, um, same cost, or maybe it goes up a little bit, but it's still really profitable. Then we'll bump it to 200, then 300, then 500, and we keep increasing it. We've bumped uh, campaigns all the way up to five to $10,000 a day uh, profitably. And so that's all we do. And every single day we're launching more campaigns because TikTok, I wish it was easier, but it's always a test every single day. And we're always hunting for winning campaign. That's how I always like to think about it. So like if today, let's just say you and I, we get on our computer, we set up two campaigns that are $50 a day, each CBO, and one works really well. We start scaling that one up. We run it up to $1,000 by the end of today. At midnight, we'll crank it back to 50 and Wait. we'll launch. Yeah, 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 I promise. What? Yeah, yeah. Side note, TikTok will give you a free $1,500 in TikTok ads if you sign up in the next 30 days. So if you spend $300, they're going to match that and give you a free $300 in TikTok ads. This is literally free money, but it is a limited offer. So you need to get started as soon as possible. If you want to learn more, I'll leave a link to that right below this video. Just make sure you click on the link based on the country that you live in. Yeah, yeah. We'll crank it back to 50 at midnight and then for the following day. And then we'll also launch maybe two or three more campaigns to then go out and hunt again and see, okay, which campaign is going to perform the best? Because TikTok is not perfect. It's not Facebook. It hasn't been around for that long. So there are some flaws that we've had to learn. And so that's what we do now is we're like, okay, let's go and do this again tomorrow and see. So it's definitely a lot of legwork, but yeah. So it's literally by the day. And yes. you, have a, you have a campaign and if it just starts hitting one day, you're like, turn this up yeah. as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. But by midnight, you turn it all the way back down because you're worried that it's not going to work the next day and they're yes. going to waste your money. Yep. <laughs> it's like you're just finding, I see why you call it hunting. It's like yeah. you're like finding these pockets of like consumers yeah. and you're finding that one pocket, but you're going to hit the top of that very quickly. Mm -hmm. And so you don't just want to automatically let it keep spending your money. That's exactly it. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> it's weird, bro. That's like kind of stressful. Yeah, but it is. It, it's a lot more time in the ad accounts. But it does make sense like uh -huh. why that would work that way. And it's really cool that the tick, you trust the TikTok AI to find this demographic way yeah. better than you just guessing. Yep, we tried it. We tried to use targeting and stuff and it just did not perform. Like we split tested a campaign with no targeting versus a campaign targeting this interest and this age range and stuff. And most of the time, I would say like 90% of the time, the campaign with no targeting works. So that's what we stick with. It's interesting because you could say like it's a product for women, but maybe a lot of guys want to buy it as a yeah. gift. And so like if you only target women, you're cutting off that entire market. Yep. And so AI, TikTok's ads can like just figure that out by themselves mm. without having to limit it. Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting for that sure. That is really cool. <laughs> and then what are like good metrics for a TikTok ad? Like when you're bumping it up, like mm. what are you specifically looking for? CPA pretty much. Obviously cost, early signs, cost, cost per acquisition, cost per purchase, whatever you want to call okay. it. But early signs of a good product is going to be a CPC, which is cost per click. So if you get 100 views on your ad and one person clicks and, you know, they'll spit out a number, you need that to be around 50 cents or less. So if you're getting like a dollar CPC, which is a dollar per click, and let's say you're only generating on your store, you get a thousand visits for the day and you generate 1200 bucks in revenue, you're not going to be profitable because you spent a thousand dollars on ads. And, you know, you got to right. spend money on the product. So we like to have a 50 cent CPC 
or lower. And then CPMs, those usually range from like eight to 12 bucks. Mm. Anything over that usually is going to be unprofitable. However, those are kind of vanity metrics. Like they're good early metrics to look at. But once we start getting purchases, we mainly look at CPA. And if our CPA is like eight bucks and we're selling a $30 product, we're probably at 30% margins. And then we just keep an eye on that. And if we our CPA goes to 10, we're still a little bit profitable. And so we just need to basically understand the target CPA that we're trying to hit and not go over that. Okay, so you want a $10 CPM, which means a thousand people to see this ad, it costs ten dollars for a thousand mm-hmm. people to see the ad. And then your cost per click needs to be fifty cents per out of those a thousand people who saw it, fifty cents per person to click. Mm-hmm. And so that's twenty people at ten dollars. And then with that, you need like two of them or three two and a half to buy at yeah. an eight dollar cost per acquisition. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? Okay. So Around 50, there, yeah. Fifty dollar clicks. $10 for every thousand 50 people cent clicks or 50 cents $10 or dollars. so for CPMs. Yeah. And then, yeah, you want to get conversions at least or like you want to do 2.5 to 3x. But so a ROAS. 2.5 to 3x yeah. ROAS. Okay. And so at scale, we're usually at around 2.5. But this is based on obviously the type of product you sell. And so you're assuming that this is a $40, $50 product. Mm-hmm. So for a $30 to $50 product, those are the metrics you're looking for. Yeah, if you're selling a $80 product, your cost per click, your CPMs, and your CPA, your cost per acquisition, cost per purchase, it's all going to be higher because right. you're going to have to reach more people because right. it's more expensive. Or if it's a so. thousand dollar product, yeah, yeah, you're not exactly. going to get yep. eight dollar cost per exactly. acquisition. Okay, yeah. but just for a general consumer product, beauty yes. for women, and most should okay. sell a product for thirty to fifty, maybe okay. even twenty. Like we've sold three dollar products on TikTok. And we can maybe get into that, but like we've done 25K days with $3 products. So it just Hmm. depends. Like, How does that make money if you have to (laughs) ship it? That was when we were doing a low cost for the product plus shipping on the back end. So essentially Ah, we got sourcing from Zendrop for I think around like three or $4 for this product shipped into the US to our customers. And then essentially what we did is we tested the product out with tons of different videos. It was this little swinging duck that you hooked into your middle rear view mirror in your car and it swung when you're driving. It was pretty cool. And so we <laughs> ran ads for that and said only $3, like I mentioned. You put the Literally, offer in the yeah. first few seconds of the video. All the girls and guys, anyone that was younger, they ran to our website and bought the product. And then we would hit them with 7 to $11 shipping on the back end. And the product only cost us four dollars to ship to the customer so we actually we did really well with that product so you're making money based on the perceived shipping cost yes okay interesting so that's just like an irresistible offer three dollars but yep. then they get their they have to pay for shipping people are used to free shipping but it's not mm-hmm. that big of a deal yeah and eight dollars for shipping doesn't seem extreme so mm-hmm. that makes essentially sense. It's a strategy yeah. yeah exactly also when we're getting like one to two dollar cpas it was <laughs> it's really profitable yeah. so it's killer but people are doing the same thing now on TikTok shop, they're doing, hey, it's only $4 for this product. And then you get on the back end and there's six to $10 shipping. So same thing's happening now with TikTok shop. I think everything honestly with drop shipping is getting reinvented into the new and improved platform like every freaking day. Of TikTok shop? Yes. So explain the actual creative that you've seen worked with creators on the TikTok shop. So you have a TikTok shop product. It's brutal how dumb it is, Brett. Okay, <laughs> I'm telling you, any video that... For the most part, as long as the creator is somewhat competent, it will sell. Like, I'll show you the video after this. Send it to me. I'll show it on the screen. No, no, no. Because it's a product we're currently selling. Yeah, yeah. I can't do that. Um, But the videos are dumb, dude. It's just like showing the product off, saying, oh, look at this, whatever. And that's kind of it. The thing that is killing it is the fact that TikTok is just pushing it so hard on the algorithm. So it's like the video, it's skewed because it doesn't have to be good content because they just want to get sales in to grow the TikTok shop so more people know about it and more people hop on it. And so I don't exactly know what content will work long term. I think I know, which is why we're kind of trying to be ahead of the curve and improve our content and make it similar to like we do with TikTok ads and hopefully, you know, outperform the competition. But it's something as simple as you filming, hey, I just got this, whatever, and it's so cool, you can get yours below. It's like, it's very dumb how easy it is. Yeah, so just showing what you're using naturally yeah. in your life and then people can click one button and buy it. Yes. As long as they see it in the video in action, they don't really mm-hmm. need much more selling. Yeah. That's so interesting. So this is like a really urgent arbitrage opportunity. Yes. Well, I'm glad I asked. <laughs> I had no idea this yeah, was a yeah, thing yeah, before yeah, I even yeah. asked you to come on here. So watch this first 30 minutes over again because <laughs> that is like the most valuable, urgent information possible. Yeah. Agreed. Like you literally don't have to do, you don't even have to make the storefront anymore, do you? Yeah, no. Or is don't. there like a science no. to TikTok shop pages? There's no page. There's just your product page. <laughs> what are you linking? Like your, mm-hmm. the Zendrop link or the AliExpress link? Or Not even that. You're you just, upload a photo mm-hmm. and a description? It's just product, photos, a price, a description, and that's it. What's, okay, what's the description? Is it? 
keywords from AliExpress or Zendrop. Like, so you don't even write just, your own? No, you don't. Well, we are going to now. So we did that approach where we did the exact listing from AliExpress. We plugged it in and it worked. But now, and we don't use AliExpress for suppliers, just for listings sometimes. Now we're going to try and go at it from a brand perspective and write a better description, mm -hmm. better photos, and see if we can get a better visitor to revenue ratio. Uh, and right now we're getting like, if we get 300K visits on our store, we're usually getting around 30K in revenue. So we're trying to bump that number up. Um, cause it's around 10% right now, but so it's literally just a volume game of how many creators can you reach out to? Yes. And so you hire VAs, but you guys aren't gatekeeping any of this. Yep. Like you obviously came on here, but you literally have a free course too. So you're not like selling drop shipping courses. Why yeah. do you have a free course? So it's a fun topic because I traditionally looked down on courses when I started out. Like I was the guy who didn't buy the courses cause I was like, I don't need that shit. And so <laughs> I didn't, I never bought any. And then I, as I went through drop shipping, I realized that it was kind of needed. Like I was behind and it took me three years before I hit my first like seven figure year. And so it probably would have sped it up if I had some information that was actually applicable. But essentially why we did a free one was because we did the math and we said, hey, you know, Seb and I sat down, Sebastian Georgiou, and we calculated like how many people would join our free course versus if we charged for it. And the number was dramatically lower if we charged for it. And so actually we have a few affiliates worked into the free course. I'll be transparent about that. And so we make a little bit of money on commission, referring people to TikTok ads, to suppliers, to Shopify. And then essentially we are able to get compensated for our information that way. That way no one has to directly pay us and buy a thousand dollar course up front. And now we can get, uh, you know, we can give hundreds of thousands of people access mm. to all of that information. That's what we did last year. We did, I think quarter million people joined our original free it's course. Crazy. Yeah. And I just met someone this Saturday who came up to me and he like shook my hand. He was so excited. I was like, what's up? Like, how do you know me or whatever? He's like, dude, we, uh, my girlfriend and I, and he was from Russia. He had just moved a few years ago. He's like, my girlfriend and I, we used to work at a bookstore and we were making minimum wage. And then we saw your guys' free course. We joined it. We started saving up money every single week and putting it back into drop shipping to give it a shot. And he's like, now we make 150,000 a month. That's he's like, thank you blast. so much for your free course. So I was like, oh my God, like I need to make more content and put out more e and more value. And so that's why we do it. Like to be completely honest, that, that is, shit is crazy to hear in real life. Like it's nuts. That is a much better way to do things though. Mm -hmm. Cause then you're not charging or gatekeeping the information. Mm -hmm. Anyone who's, most people aren't lacking the information. They're just lacking the execution. Yeah, and so, dude. And that it's and, funny. And it's not oh, like God. you're going to, yeah. And it's not like you're, it, you use Shopify and TikTok anyways. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I think the issue though is a lot of people will just watch and they get excited for a second and then they kind of fall off. I believe 90% of stores shut down without making a sale. So it's like all these people start and they get that initial excitement and then after a few weeks, they kind of fall off. So that's also why I just want to keep posting content and stuff to make people understand that this is all still very possible and it's very viable. But you have the, you know, you got to go through the shit so that way the universe can in turn, I guess, reward you. Yeah, there's almost like, there's a lot of people that have the, Op or the uh, thought process that if you charge for it, people value it more. Mm -hmm. And so then they're more likely to follow through and take action. But that's- I kind of agree with that. It, it's objectively, it's true. Yeah. But at the same time, like you could just make it free and then just motivate people and help them mm -hmm. make sure it's possible because yeah. people will still pay a thousand dollars and fall off. Yep, so I, sure. I think you guys have the right approach, yeah. especially since the information's available already, mm -hmm. that it's just a much more win-win situation. So, yeah, I agree. So what are you seeing is like, the number one thing people should be jumping on right now. TikTok Hop, shop. TikTok sure. shop. Yeah. Okay. So like, is this like, a, it's only in the U S though. Mm -hmm. And then is there like an application process or is it open for anybody? Or no, what as long as you have a social security or an EIN, you can plug it in and get a TikTok shop up. Um, yeah. I would say combining that with paid ads with TikTok, if you can do both of those, have a TikTok shop pop off organically and then sync it up with TikTok ads. That's what we're doing right now. And it's working really, really well. Um, that's all we're going to do for Q4. We're obviously going to run some Google ads, some Facebook ads, but drop shipping with TikTok shop is the new thing simply because of how much they're pushing it with their algorithm. Like it's actually gross how many videos I, I scroll mm -hmm. on the feed and see that are actually just TikTok shops. Um, so yeah, it's clear that that's their intention. They're probably making more money off that commission than off of their ads in yes, general. Probably. <laughs> so they're literally incentivized to promote your product, Yes, which is insane. Uh-huh. God, it's like, wow. And yeah, dude. Once we found that this worked, we have like a few shops now launching and just, we're just going to keep growing with it because it's so Have simple. high ticket products, have you seen high ticket products work on there? Um, the, 
we're gonna sell some for like seventy to a hundred, but, but no, like in the thousands. I've or. seen people post them. Like I saw someone post the couch that was like six thousand bucks. It had zero sales, so I don't know yet. It's so new though; it's only been out for a few months, so I have no clue. Can you sell info products on there? Like, yes, you can sell digital products. Really? Yeah. Oh, brand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this came wild. out. Can, yeah, you can sell digital goods. Okay. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay. Have you thought about because you have like a community? Yeah, but that like, one's like. <laughs> they, that one wouldn't do well on TikTok just because we only we either have a free course which is for beginners and people who don't want to spend money and then <laughs> I'm gonna be honest we have one that's a few grand that one's where I'm on three calls a week with my team your in inner there. circle yeah. yeah with the inner circle so it's like I'm not gonna put that on TikTok shop and so there's no middle ground so definitely not what would a b- good digital product be on TikTok a few bucks shop? like if you could do a guide for something that's mm. super cheap that's a I guess like a lead magnet in a sense that still can make tons of money we're seeing that work I, I also huh. have an idea though I think like digital printable products are gonna be really killer Etsy's already done them with calendars with other daily planners and stuff and I'm seeing actual physical daily planners do really well with TikTok shop I think digital products that you can print like they're called printable products printable those will do really good in the future Digital printable. So like yeah. they download the file, but then they can print mm-hmm. it out themselves. Yeah, and have an actual calendar product. Yeah. yeah. Whoa, okay. So w- hold on. I want to go deep on this digital <laughs> info product. This on is TikTok my, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you said it's like basically a lead magnet, but you could charge for it. Mm-hmm. So is the TikTok shop, like say I have a TikTok shop, yeah. but I also have my TikTok personal account. Mm-hmm. Those are separate, right? No. Well, they if you want them to be, but no. So y- with TikTok shop, this is, oh, I haven't even told you about this. This is exciting oh, news. Okay, so with the <laughs> shop, you have one main account that you link with, one main TikTok profile. So you could do your main one, and then you have five marketing accounts. So essentially, for example, my product is working well right now. We have a creator that's doing good. I could reach out to her and say, hey, you know, you're making this much every single week with commissions. What if I hire you and pay you monthly to, you know, sync up the shop onto your account, and then you just make a video a week or two videos a week pushing that product? Or they like, I actually have seen a little bit of what tabs does. They'll make tons of accounts, right? You can have five marketing accounts. So have people sync up to all these different accounts and sync the TikTok shop with that account. That way it's on the account and it's linked. And then they can just post organically themselves. And they're actually your employees rather than just random creators. So it's a double, you know, whammy. Okay. You so can do. you say five marketing shops. So on my mm-hmm. personal TikTok, I can have up to five TikTok shops displayed. No other okay. way around on okay. your one TikTok shop. You can make content for it. I can link to your TikTok shop. Uh, Brandon can, Seb can, tons of uh, five people can total. So essentially on your profile, if someone clicks on your profile, they'll see a shop. And then if you sync it with other accounts, they'll also see a shop on the main profile of your account. Like, you know, where you can see the followers, all the videos and all that. Oh, There'll so be another okay. tab. So the brand account. Yes. The brand account can have five people? The no, the TikTok shop is an entity, okay? okay? The entity is linked to one single TikTok account that posts content, okay? So that's how it is set up. It's a brand account. Yes, okay. but you can create five other brand accounts, hire them all to make content. So now it's not just one brand account making content. Okay. It's five making content. So you can have five brand pages, basically. Yes, exactly. But they're all the same brand, a slightly different name, mm-hmm. and different people can run them. Yes. Ah, mm-hmm. Okay. And those are going really well. Like we're seeing those go really viral. And again, it's all in-house. What would be what would be the purpose for having five different brand accounts? More virality, pretty much. Just trying to, again, touch different pieces of uh, TikTok's overall audience. So each different account is going to have like a different subsect audience. Yeah. If you're doing different creators, they're naturally just going to hit different so pockets. Diff- okay. So is this account going to be like, like Hair Curlers Co? Hair Curlers, whatever. Yeah. Like- so it can be. However, I am like talking about the idea with my partner about having influencers just sync them up with either their main accounts or if they have another account because you do need 5,000 followers for this um, and running it under themselves and almost acting like they are a small business owner. So that's also like another angle you can go for this is show off the product and talk about it as a marketing person under the account. So I can just make any product and put it under that shop tab? You could literally drop ship and sync it to your personal account if you wanted to. (laughs) Whoa. Yeah, it doesn't so literally matter. Just it's on just my prof- account. So literally just on my profile now, there's a products section. Yeah. Not yet. You have to sync a shop and then you're good. So you have and to it has sync to, be your to shop. a shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you have to make a brand page and then on your personal account. No, you don't have to make a brand page. I'm saying you create a shop and then TikTok's okay. like, who the hell is this sync yeah, to? Yeah, and you're yeah. like, boom. So you can't just sell other people's products right away. You can as a creator. <laughs> so so okay. you can either be an affiliate <laughs> or you can be a shop seller. 
Okay. Like be a seller on the shop. So if I made a TikTok shop account. Yes. Then I had listed my digital products. Yes. Then I can connect my TikTok account mm-hmm. and sell my digital products yes. on both of those. Yeah. But the shop is not an account. Correct. But then you can make five brand accounts for that shop. Yes. But then you can also have creators. Selling and then you those can have affiliates. Products. Affiliates are so the side. creators yeah, are yeah, the yeah. affiliates. Yep. Okay. So if you make a TikTok shop, you can mm-hmm. then have five brand accounts, and then any creator can be an affiliate to that yes. brand account. Boom. I understand. <laughs> okay. 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 There yeah. we go. Thank yep. you. That is so cool. Uh-huh. And so it's like, dude, it's the new thing. Like it's crazy. I almost don't even want to talk <laughs> anymore. <laughs> and just like that's like everything people need to know and go yep. start. Are there any other like clarification like? Any other nuances that we haven't t- talked about? Because I just got that one out of you. No, I mean, just understand that you need to have tracking within the U.S. So TikTok shop will ban you if you try to drop ship w- out of China. So make sure if you talk to your suppliers, talk to Zendrop or CJ Dropshipping, they can both do this. Mm. Make sure you have U.S. fulfillment. So that's the only thing. If you try to drop ship and the tracking number shows China, they will ban you. Because, again, they're trying to be Amazon. They want fast shipping times. They want their customers to love them and come back to buy more and more and more. So to do that, they are trying to, you know, eliminate Chinese dropshippers, which, you know, you could still do it, but um, there's just a few hoops you got to jump around. Okay. And then so when you're making this, your TikTok ad to your content, you're buying the product yourself first and then just shooting or you're doing UGC. I personally don't. Right. My girlfriend will. I have other creators that a will. UGC? Yeah. Where do you find UGC people? We've just have people now like that we've worked with over the years but uh, you could again i would personally use tiktok shop like it's free now you don't have to pay them a thing you just send them the product and they make content Mm. and then you get their code for the actual video and you can sync it to their video so that way it looks extremely native and it's synced to their account and to excuse me to everything and you run ads directly to the video that's already on their accounts that way it looks trustworthy and clean explain what you mean by it looks super native okay so Instead of running an ad that says sponsored, that all the comments are hidden and there's like two likes and it's from this random profile that's not even a profile. Or a celebrity. Yeah, yeah, it's just like an ad account that's not even a real profile. So instead of doing that, you can sync the video that, let's just say a TikTok shop affiliate already posted. You say, hey, I need the TikTok access code or the ad code. I forgot what it was called. And they will copy it for you and send it to you. And then when you set up your TikTok ads inside, again, the campaign, the ad group, inside the actual ad itself, you can paste that code in there and it will sync that actual video up. That way you don't have to actually link it to an ad, like an ad visual account that's not a real account. It actually Mm -hmm. links to whatever, the guy or girl's account that you're running ads for. So it just makes it look so clean because that's what people are used to. They're used to seeing ads or videos that are just, you know, on the platform from an account. So that's what it looks like on the yeah. user's end. I guess the best way to think about it is if it's like a disguised ad. Yeah, you're cloaking it kind of. <laughs> an ethically disguised yeah. ad. And so I think this is a really important note that I'm going to cover here is that there's people who are making Instagram story ads and to make it look more native, they are using the format where you know when you post somebody else's story, like if they tag you in your story, yeah. and then you hit, hit add to your story. Then there's like, it's like a little box and then there's like the border. It's not like the full screen. Mm. That's like a native story ad. It looks very native because you don't, you kind of associate that format as sharing somebody else's story to your story. Mm -hmm. But now they're making ads that are mimicking that exact style. And so it's a native ad. And so you want to match this format of the ad to match the style of content that does well on that platform. Yeah. So if it's a tick, if it's like a Twitter ad, You'd want like a Twitter thread. You wouldn't want to just make like a 16 by nine video that you would use on a TV or something. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really important concept that a lot of people overlook now. They think they can just make one video and then run it across everywhere. Yeah. Where you need to literally think deeply on how to make each ad fit the style of content that does well on that platform. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really important note. Sorry. I I agree. I was going to tweet this the other day. That's exactly what we do as well. So that's, that's funny you mentioned that. I think that's just like the advanced level, like SMA. Yeah. Yeah. I want to ask about like, if you're running a Shopify drop shipping store, like Mm -hmm. CRO or your like landing page. Oh God, we'll be here for hours. Yeah. Let's let's be here for 30 minutes. (laughs) Do you want to? Yeah. Because I think the shop is self-explanatory. Okay. So to go on your point that you just made about, you want to have stuff be native. We do the same thing for our actual Shopify store. So I'm going to make sure, yeah, that camera's still going. Um, So what you just said, like you need to make sure the content is tailored to the actual platform. We do that same thing with websites. So if we're running an ad specifically on TikTok and we have a Shopify store that's made for TikTok ads, 
we literally create gifs and or gifs whatever you want to call them with the tiktoks and we put them in our description we make sure that you know we comprehend people are holding the product people are showing it off on tiktok and so we don't want to pull them onto their website and have a white background photo with no one holding the product no one showing it off and having it be a natural looking photo so for our whole website structure we keep in mind how tiktok operates and how user friendly it is and how it just looks so fun and playful and there's people showing off the products and all that stuff so that's how we also design our websites is like keeping that fun creator focused you know overall vibe onto our website and i guess that's one of the ways that we optimize our conversion rates and overall average order value the average amount someone spends on our site so those are simple things yeah are you doing so First off, you're just saying that if they come from a TikTok UGC style vertical mm -hmm. video, some a girl using the product, yeah, they're gonna see that exact same type of content. branding content mm -hmm. on the website as well, so they understand like this is a coordinated customer journey basically, yep. and so they feel like it's all connected. Yeah, that that's makes exactly sense. Exactly what we're doing. Are you selling single product stores? Yes. So it's just you make you pick one product mm -hmm. and you make a whole website around that one single product. Yeah. And then if they want to buy if they want to buy a product, that's the only product they can buy and they click on it and they buy the product. Yes, we have that, but most of the time we will add an upsell bundle or something like that. But yeah, that's pretty much What would it. the upsell bundle be? Um, Multiple? So but for upsells, essentially we'll do that. Like we'll have a bundles upsell or we'll do, hey, you know, you bought this two piece cozy sweater with sweats. Do you want slippers to go along with it as the actual uh, cart page? And that's mm. kind of it. It's is, that, fancy. is that pretty much any product though? Like if you find one product, you make sure you have like one or two like upsells that are complimentary? Most of the time. Sometimes if it's a product that people will more than happily pay or buy twi buy two quantities or whatever, we will just focus on that and we'll just hit home with that. We'll have a post-purchase upsell. But yeah, if it's something where people are only going to buy it once, yes, we'll have a complimentary product synced up. It just depends. Okay. So let's say you have this hair curler. You're running a TikTok ad. You have the landing page that matches the same style of UGC. So they're reminded Then if they purchase, they have an upsell. Uh -huh. Are there like any other sort of like email marketing campaigns? Are there, is there text message marketing? Oh yeah, we do everything. <laughs> okay, explain, explain it. Um, that's a deep conversation. So uh, for SMS, I mean, we do very basic stuff. However, what you can do. So essentially what we do on a beginner store that we're doing, I don't know, let's say 100K a month. Cause that's a beginner. Like that's only <laughs> a few grand a day. Uh, keep in mind, we pump to 50 to 100K a day, like with TikTok ads. So 1,000 to few thousand dollars a day, we will do SMS for recovering abandoned carts. We'll say, hey, you left this product in your cart. Do you still want it? And then if they don't reply, would you like me to try and get a discount for you? And then it'll say, hey, here's 10%. You can use SMS bump. There's tons of different apps for that. That one's pretty simple. We'll also do Clavio and we'll do pretty much the same thing as well as doing something like, hey, here's our weekly discount or here's our weekly new products. This is where we start to expand and go from like $1,000 a day to maybe $10,000 a day to 20K a day is we start to add in more products. That way our store doesn't look like a one product dropshipping store. It looks like a brand and like a catalog. And so that's what we start to do as we grow. And we will reflect that with our emails and our text. We'll start to say, hey, we dropped a new collection. First 10 people to use this code get 20% off or 50% off or something like that. And so we'll start to integrate that into the marketing. But that comes once we're already scaling pretty aggressively. So this is where I want to actually kind of go a little more in depth uh -huh. because I think most people listening, I think they understand and they think that you find a product, you run an ad, you sell it. Yeah. But the real money is made in email marketing, text message marketing, follow-ups, building a list, yep. and selling, reselling the LTV, basically. And selling the actual company. We've done that a few times, yeah. too. Yeah, <laughs> okay, great. And so I just think you're probably so advanced, you forget what it's like For to sure. like yeah. be a beginner. Yes. And so what, so text message marketing, is mm. one, where, where are you getting their phone number from? It's on the checkout page. So there's a little button that you will add once you add an app that says, I agree to SMS and email marketing. And you add that, and then essentially now you have their phone number, you legally can market to it. So. Excuse is this me. before they're purchasing or yeah, this is while they're purchasing, they're checking out the first their information. Yeah. That's where you'll collect their phone number and email. Okay. And then how many different text message chains do you have? Uh, you can send as many as you want. This is where I go a little gray area. I personally don't manage this stuff anymore. Okay. I'm going to be honest. I don't okay. do the text or the emails anymore, but usually we'll send a few in the first few hours to try and really recover that abandoned cart. And then anything after that, I have people to, to actually set up the flows and stuff, but you want to keep doing it. Like for example, I buy cigars online. So I have this company cigars direct. They text me like every week and I originally forgot about their site. And now I buy cigars like once a month because they're like, here's a discount. And so 
So if you hit them and actually give them value and they liked your initial product that they bought and they actually enjoyed it, then you will consistently be able to sell them, which is why I think having a good supplier and all that shit is like square one. You need to dial that in. Otherwise, like you said, email marketing, SMS, retaining customers, those are all valuable, but only if the first touch is good. good It's not good. Right. They will say, you know, screw off and they will hate you. And so dial that in first and get a good supplier, get a good uh, product quality and then you'll kill it. And I want to add to that. So the hair curler, like you said, that product only did good because we improved upon it. We paid like 40 or 50 grand to improve the battery life of it because the initial one was dog shit. It was really bad and everyone hated it. And so they, that was like the number one complaint was, hey, they, I love the product, but the battery sucks. So we had to pay a supplier on Alibaba to up the battery life. And that's when we started to actually have real success because we listened to our customers and kept improving the product. So I think that is, uh, you know, core value that you should implement if you plan to keep growing. How do you go about that process of improving the battery? Because like the suppliers across the world, yes, and it's their product essentially, mm-hmm. and you're just selling it. I almost view dropshipping like affiliate marketing for physical yeah. products. Like you're just doing the marketing for these <laughs> manufacturers. Yep. But how do you reach out to them and be like, hey, we want a variation and how did you have to, like, where did that 40 to 50 grand go? Like, you had to pay them for, like, an engineer? You have to, no, uh, so essentially, I've done this a few times now. So essentially how it starts is you have a good track record with a supplier, like another instance. Uh, you sold a thermometer in 2020 for COVID. I sold it to Chick-fil-A, banks, government facilities, all those big companies. And so the product had a few flaws. And as we scaled it to, like, I think our first month we did a quarter mil Profit was around 125K for those, you know, haters thinking there's no profit. (laughs) And so after that, I got data back from the customers and they complained and some people like certain features. And then you kind of figure that out. And then you just go to the supplier and say, hey, you know, we are selling this amount. We're doing really well, but this is what we need to improve on. How can we do so? What's the time horizon? How much will it cost? Will you charge me anything up front? And all this other stuff. And then you just essentially keep communicating with them though. It's not actually that difficult. So you're just, you just literally t- like you have like a support email and people yeah. are like, this is great, but the battery's shit. Can I yes. get a refund or yeah. whatever it is? And then you're, and you take just, note, take note, and take you just note. tell the supplier, Hey, we, we're getting a lot of sales, but everyone's saying the battery's bad. Yeah. Can you try to make, just say, Hey, can you fix that? Mm-hmm. And they say, yes, it, but what will it you, cost to improve the battery? And then they will tell us, Hey, it's going to cost an extra dollar or two to actually make the battery last this long. And if you're willing to do it, it'll take us a few weeks. So that's what they'll do. So it's going to take a few weeks and you have to commit to a minimum order yes, requirement. Yes, which is scary for a lot yeah. of people. <laughs> so you have to pay 50 grand up yes. front in inventory, yep. which is kind of the complete opposite mindset people have when they start drop shipping because yeah. they don't want to do that. Yep. But if you want to make real money, it's sometimes important. Sometimes yeah. the product's perfect as is. Yeah, you know? yeah, it just depends. Yeah. That's why we, we're now very selective with what we sell because we don't want to do that long term. Like we've sold clothing in the last 12 months, made millions from it. And we didn't have to touch the products because they were perfectly fine. So it's like, it just depends. So what does it take to sell a dropshipping store? To sell a store, you don't need a whole lot. It's not as fancy as you'd think. Um, You need your books in order. You need a good amount of revenue for the past 12 months, preferably. If you're not going to sell a store or have a store running for 12 months, you're not going to have a good exit. And so at least 12 months of good revenue. And that's kind of it. Like you overall have to have a good blueprint for how to grow the company. Otherwise, no one's going to buy the product. If it's some weird marketing scheme or by the store, if it's some weird marketing scheme that isn't scalable and that the new owner can't basically replicate. So that's a surface level, kind of all you really need. Um, As far as revenue and stuff, though, you're going to get terrible uh, multiplier if you're going to be selling it like at the decline of your store, which is what we had done recently. It was just a store that was like sitting and we didn't really touch it. And we ended up getting a little like a low six figure exit for that store, which was still good, but it's just like, you know, it was just sitting there. It was maybe it peaked at like 600k a month and then it kind of fizzled out because so if you're going to sell you want to make sure sales are increasing month over yeah month. for sure because then you sell based on the value which is what you want to do and then point out holes that like hey if you want to grow this you yep. could probably try these three different things yeah or give just, them a blueprint and sell them on the vision and then it's where do you sell easier. them at? is there a website um, yeah well there are brokers now that you can actually connect with if anyone wants one you can message me um or you can do like flippa i know shopify used to have a marketplace they don't anymore um, mm-hmm. But Flip is the first start, or I would prefer you guys use a broker for sure. Where can they message you? Uh, Instagram. What's your name? Sebastian. <laughs> what's, your, what's your Instagram <laughs> I'm handle? just kidding. Uh, Sebastian Escueda with two A's. That's literally your entire process. Have you? Yeah, bro. That's dropshipping. <laughs> that is pretty interesting. Yeah. But is 
with TikTok shop, like, uh-huh. is what's your end goal right now? Is this just like a time to run it up and just have profitable stores, or like what is like the ten million, hundred million dollar strategy that yep. you could go after? So we're gonna make a few million Q4 with drop shipping, not with course selling or anything else, just with drop shipping. And our goal right now is to test products, find what works with TikTok shop, establish ourselves on the platform, get good reviews on our listing, and then brand the products. That's exactly what we're doing. That's our exact blueprint. Um, because we understand that honestly, TikTok shop is amazing, but they're probably going to update their policies and want shorter shipping times, want quicker you know, shipping or uh, what is it? called fulfillment, like processing the orders quicker, they're going to want that stuff eventually. And I know that. And so knowing that it's going to be, again, a competition with Amazon. Knowing that I'm trying to pivot all of these new stores I'm starting into brands and then just kind of honing in on that and scaling. So that's my overall goal. And that's what I'm working towards right now. So compare what you're doing now to what it could look like when you take quote unquote brand. Mm -hmm. Like What does that look like? U.S. inventory, the product is probably custom. We've probably improved a few things to build a moat around our business. That way we're not competing with drop shippers. We have a direct edge over them because our product is a little unique. And then tons of creators making content. We have hundreds of affiliates, maybe even thousands uh, pumping out content. And we're consistent, excuse me, consistently running TikTok ads. That's pretty much it. Okay. So it's just basically drop shipping is like almost like your MVP of a software. Yeah, Like you're testing if there's like, interest in the market if people mm-hmm. want this then you launch it get feedback figure out a way to improve it yeah. and then if it's actually something that sticks build a brand around it focus on optimizing conversions do email marketing text message marketing but it all starts with just finding a product getting creators to promote it yeah. seeing that people will buy it yep. and then just elevate and grow from there mm-hmm. as you have more resources yeah and like double down that's the thing i messed up with when I was younger is I didn't double down. I had, you know, I started making a few grand a week and then a month. And then I was like, oh, this is so cool. I'm going to go spend all my money. But now it's like, okay, stuff is working. We need to double down. We need to keep growing. We need to improve. And that's what I think every beginner should do is they should learn what's working at low scale, improve, 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 listen to the customer, keep perfecting your product. And then over time, you will have a sick brand. Because you're trying to build an asset that you can sell. Yes. And that's the payday in theory. Or most yeah. people are short sighted and just want to make 10K yeah. a month and then they think they're rich. Mm-hmm. But if you can actually just actually focus on making this an asset that operates without you, then you can sell it. Yeah. That's always your goal now. Yep. Is your goal always to sell the company? What we're doing right now is we're trying to, with TikTok Shop, I'll tell you what we're doing. We are growing our stores. We're having a lot of affiliates grow our product. And then we are probably going to package them up and sell them uh, as a whole to people that actually see the value. And if we have a list of like a few thousand affiliates pushing our product, um, it'll be pretty easy to kind of sell that to people. 100%. And you're going to like- But this is unknown. TikTok shop could not work in like a few months. That's why like, it's kind of weird for me to talk about it because I don't know, but that's our goal. But you're pioneering. Yes. And it could be huge at the same time. For sure. So this was, first off, Watch over the first 30 <laughs> minutes, 45 minutes again, because if you fully understand what yeah, you're saying, I gave a blueprint, man. huge opportunity, brand new shit. But yep. what I also, you are like full on in the creator economy and you do much more than just the drop shipping side. Yeah. So hopefully we exhibited that you have expertise in drop shipping sure. and you're literally <laughs> doing this right now with TikTok shop and it's so cool. And yeah. I learned a lot. So thank you for sharing that uh-huh, with me. For sure. But I also want to kind of show off everything else you do because mm. We kind of foreshadowed you have an inner circle. You have a free course that a quarter million people joined. Mm -hmm. But you also have a YouTube channel with like 130. How many do you have now? Like 160. 160, yeah. Sorry. (laughs) You you have a pop-in YouTube channel. Yeah. And you're like certified because you've been in the game since 2017. So kind of map out your entire business or all the different verticals that you have right now. Yeah. Okay. So essentially... I just wake up and money comes in. Yeah. All it is. I'm just kidding. So I have my TikTok, or, uh, oh, I'll just say drop shipping businesses. Those are things that we've been running for a few months, a few weeks, a few years. And there's a lot of those. I think we're running maybe six or seven stores right now. We're adding on three this week. So we'll say 10 stores by the end of this week. So I have drop shipping businesses. Those are, you know, one whole asset. I also have free course, which makes us money with affiliates. So that's another business. I also have my YouTube channel, which makes me not much because I don't post that much. So maybe a few grand a month. And then inner circle that again, I I think we only add a handful of people a month. So that's probably, I don't know, 10 or 30 K a month. So not much a main, the main income is from drop shipping and other stuff, but yeah, mainly drop shipping. And then I look to get into real estate eventually. Um, but right now I'm just kind of stacking cash and saving up for more stuff. Cause I just bought a home that was expensive. So <laughs> <Very>. <laughs> kind of got to re re up the, uh, the cash pile, but 
But you also are talking about how you're building software. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I we're mean, building you one, too. Yes, so. yes, yeah. But so, so you have two softwares being built. Yes. Explain that. Um, so one is going to be a Shopify store builder where essentially you can, in a few clicks, go from not having a Shopify store to having one that's up to our tier where it, we literally replicated our exact structure on this software where it will literally build you one exactly how we build our stores. And I say this with your confidence because I'm seeing it right now. Um, so that's one of them. I want to make my life easier and building stores is boring and like doing all that other stuff is boring. So firstly, we just kind of wanted something to do it ourselves. And then we figured, Hey, a lot of people other, like a lot of others may use this and may benefit from it. So that's kind of how they came about. It's not, nothing fancy. <laughs> okay. So this is a con cause we have very similar approaches to business right now. Mm -hmm. And my biggest concern is that I do a lot of different things mm -hmm. as in like we're building a software right now. That's the main thing we're striving for. But we also have an agency where we develop other people's software. And then we also have like an educational community. And then I have my YouTube channel. And then there's like other tertiary random yeah. affiliate opportunities. And so I feel like I'm running like four businesses. <laughs> we have our media company, our newsletter, like all these different things. And so part of me is like, am I doing too many things? Mm -hmm. Or is this the new like creator business product stack yeah that's like it's going to be standard like we have a youtube channel and you have the distribution and then you just have these arms of your business like do you ever feel like if you said screw youtube videos screw my inner circle screw mm -hmm. the software development all of this and i went all in on tiktok shop do you think that would surmount all of this money combined do you ever think about that yeah i do think it would but i don't think it would be as fun I don't care as much as other people about money. Like I wanted a lot of money, but I also want to have fun along the way. I'm a hundred. I don't want way. to be an e-com like hustler and just do that. I want to meet other people who know me and who I can impact. I guess it's a little bit of my ego. Like I want to be known a little bit for what I do. And so, no, I, I don't think, well, yes, I think I would probably make more money if I just did drop shipping, but I don't really want to do that because I like meeting cool people and all that stuff. And you have to do YouTube to kind of do that, you know? Yeah, because it's not all about making as much money as possible. And look at all the big brands. Like, all the big brand owners end up getting on YouTube anyways. So 100%. it's like there's a, a void in all of them anyways. So I don't know. I guess maybe we, we started it first and then we did the business or I kind of did them side by side. But no, I think having an audience is something. Even the big brand owners, look at Elon Musk. You know, he just bought Twitter. Everyone wants it. So I a do. Personal brand is power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. So I think, I think it's valuable. Yeah, for me, I always view it like I'm just, I literally will go and like I'll learn something and mm -hmm. have a new strategy for my business and I'll just go on YouTube and talk about it. Yeah. And then two months later, didn't work at all. And then I just do the same thing over again. Like I've almost, I like, feel <laughs> like I'm sharing my, what I'm doing live. Yeah. Whether it fails or succeeds, I just like talk about what I'm doing and that's like an easy extension of my personal brand. Yeah. And it helps you hold you accountable to stuff. Mm -hmm. Like if you say something on YouTube, you feel like you kind of have to, yeah. like you're like stating it to the world. You yep. got to like live up to that now. So I think- I, I used to do that. I don't do that as much. Why not? I, I like keeping, so Alex Becker, actually, he's been kind of controversial because he used to say that that's what he did. He used to say, talk about what you're going to do and, you know, then people will hold you to it. And then he just said, like, shut up and don't say anything. So it's kind of controversial. Like, he's contradicting himself <laughs> right now. But I don't, I, I used to do that, but I don't know. I just like keeping what I'm doing private. And I tell it's like my inner circle, like I'll get on calls. I'll be like, guys, this new YouTube video is coming out in two days, this documentary. But like everything else I keep hush hush just because I don't know I honestly like I'm naturally an introvert and I don't want people asking me shit and I guess that's <laughs> probably why if something fails I want it to be like I know and I, they don't know and so I don't know I guess that's probably why but uh, maybe I don't want to give people that much of an edge either well, like, like my so business is very very reliant on like products and winning strategies and that's why we don't give away like everything in YouTube videos really ever um, we like to keep some stuff for ourselves that way you know not everyone can. So your YouTube channel is all drop shipping, right? Yes. And it hasn't been anything different ever. Yeah. And so you just keep it purely tactical. Yes, but I don't know. I would love to make other content, but people just only like drop shipping on my content. Well, that's like the, that's where I, I have my reserves. Cause yeah. like if I like switch from web three to AI or mm -hmm. AI to no code SaaS or whatever on my channel, like you're like, your audience is like churning in a way cause yeah. you're going to lose people, but then you attract a new audience, but then you're also like, is this a person? It's your name. Your channel's your name too. Is it like? Is this just a personal brand? Is this channel just about me? Yeah. It's just one big old mind yep. mess of like, what should you do? Because <laughs> I totally get it. Because if you make a video on something different, yeah. your algorithm 
No Bro, one's sometimes gonna... I just want to film a video of my car or something. Your <laughs> car's like, no. You know? I feel like you should because yeah. I feel like eventually that's where it goes. Like, and that's why I agree. That's why I, we filmed this video where we built a dropshipping business for like since June, and it's been a few months. And you know, shout out. To, oh, he's not here anymore. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say, but yeah, we filmed this video where we worked on a dropshipping business. We took it from zero to a quarter million dollars, profited around sixty grand, and we had someone filming us the whole time, which wasn't just like us sitting down. We were walking around. And it we took were traveling. six months. Yeah, it like, took months. Like we were traveling. We were on a private jet. Seb and I drove our supercars around. Like there was so much cool content. And so I think that's where stuff's going to go for sure. And if this video does well, we'll probably double down on that, you know? <laughs> yeah, 100%. Do you have advice for people trying to build a personal brand on YouTube? No, I don't. I mean, just stay consistent and don't think stuff's going to happen overnight because most of the time it's not. And be yourself. I see a lot of people, even people that are bigger, they don't know who they are and they try to be other people. Just be yourself, you know? Like people will like you more and you'll feel like when someone's being genuine versus when they're trying to be someone they're not. Like you can pick up on that energy. And so, no, I would just say, you know, post consistently and be yourself. And don't be afraid to be different because that's what the world actually loves. Even if people won't say that, um, you'd rather be different than look like everyone else. So Yeah, authenticity is like very, going to be more and more in demand as AI makes everything. Oh, more, everyone sure, uses bro. 11 labs yeah, over here. Exactly. The authenticity will be much more important. And it's much better to say, hey, I don't know anything. I'm yeah. trying to figure it out. Watch me learn than trying to mimic an Alex you're trying to be a video. Master and you're yeah, fucking trying poor. to just literally <laughs> just literally your mom's house still. scripting somebody else's content yeah. and trying to pretend like it's nothing worse than you see a 16 year old saying like giving people business advice. Yeah. I'm like, dude, like you might be a super genius, but you're probably not. Yep. Like, so I understand completely. Mm -hmm. But okay, I mean, I don't want to go too long just because I think that what you said in the first 45 minutes was super important. Yeah. And that's enough for people to wrap their head around this week in general. Mm. But just the last thing I always ask people, what is your, like all the software tools you use for like, yeah, every single software tool you use to make your business run. Okay. So right now for product research, we use PP ads. We use Zendrop. I would call that a software. That's our supplier. We use Shopify to build our stores. And then we use a few different apps on there. Join the free course also. Like I, I'm, I'm going to happily plug it just because like I made a video overviewing all of those apps. So check that out for sure. But those are the basic softwares. And then I use Slack for communication with all of my team, Discord to house my community. And then that's kind of it, dude. I'm, I'm pretty simple. I'm not like you guys. You guys are way dialed in with some other softwares and stuff, but I'm pretty damn simple with it. So... Okay, yeah, we just build our own. Yeah, so, exactly. Okay, cool. <laughs> Sebastian Esqueda, everybody, follow him on social media. If you really want to learn the sauce of YouTube, go to his course. Where's the course? Uh, it's ConquerTikTokDropshipping.com. Conquer TikTok Dropshipping. Because look, we, dis we helped you guys discover it last year. Now it's time for you all to conquer it. And it's a completely free course. Yeah, it's free. It goes in depth. It's hours and hours long, every detail. Even yeah. more detail than I can get to on this podcast, but... Hopefully this gave you the high level, but I appreciate you sharing the game, brother. No problem. Thanks Thank for you, having bro. me.